57 degrees in Central Park, relative humidity 62%. My name is Vicki. I'm 27 years old. I've been a bike messenger for five years. I just had my 46th birthday. My name is Bill. My road handle is Silver Fox, and I've been on the road 10 years. Open my eyes, cause I feel the sun. Open my mind for this morning. Thomas Athenius. But on the streets, everybody knows me as the Greek. I've been out on the road eight and a half years. Yo, sub nine mil. There are about 3,000 part time messengers and about 100 hardcore messengers riding in the city today. There are 60,000 runs delivered in New York daily. A run includes a pickup of a document or a package and its delivery to its final destination. Advertising companies, galleries, magazines, and many others depend on the prompt delivery of their important documents, photographs, whatever. Mothers, double day? Okay, how many books are you picking up? Now, this speedy delivery would be, like, impossible in Manhattan if you choose, like, a car, a van, even a motorcycle has a hard time getting around in New York. Now, a bike, now, that's the only thing they could do it, and only a bike messenger could break this barrier of traffic. Oh, there is nothing like riding through the jungle on my bicycle. Some people ski, some people skate. I ride this bike, and this is it. Riding through the jungle on my bicycle. Riding through the jungle on my bicycle. The city of New York. New York City and the, and the business industry are the body of the city and the heart of the city is the bicycle messenger we're the heart of communication you know a lot of people they want things done they want it done quickly and they want it done as quickly as possible you know they pay for their privilege they want it done direct no stops in between they want it to go directly to the individual that it's, that it's addressed to that's who it goes to Oh, hi. Come in, come in. I'm going to give you a package. Uh, I go and get it. Just wait here. We deliver uh, videotape. We deliver um, garment bags. We deliver portfolios. And all of these things that we deliver touch a number of other people. You know, if they weren't able to be delivered within a time frame, a lot of things wouldn't move. The mechanism would, would shut down. So you, just, you want him to get this package? Absolutely in person, nobody else. Do I have to sign anything? Nope, that's your receipt. Okay, thank you so much. See ya. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks a lot. A lot of times a deal will hinge on timing, and you can't rely on, on UPS for timing. You can't rely on Federal Express for timing but you can rely on a bicycle messenger. And without that, that comfort, you throw off the timing of the entire business world. 
because everybody's so used to us right now. If someone gives me a package, it's like gold, because it's part of my pride, is how fast I get it there and the condition that it arrives. I like to impress people. And when I take a package and it gets there in no time, these people are like, wow. You know, when I walk into a person's office and they see it's me delivering their package and they know it's a rush, they're really glad it's me. Like, oh, Steve, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> What's up, yeah? All right, man. This for me? Yeah, man. All right, man. Double rush. You got it. I'll take it easy. All right. The rush is rocked out in an hour. A double rush is rocked out, picked up and delivered in a half hour. A triple rush, you get one possessed messenger to knock it out in 15 minutes. You know, something that had to be there yesterday. Like, let's say it's a normal run would be $7, you know, to go 10 blocks. $7. A rush it would be $11. A double rush, it would be $15. The triple brush would bounce that baby up to $19. Hi, uh, Start at triple eight seventh and work your way down to two Penn Plaza on the west side. Okay, I'll beep you, don't call me, I'll call you. Bye. Okay, dispatcher is, um, basically the coordinator of what goes on here he takes in all the all the runs that come in and he gives them out to the messengers he's got to know where all the messengers are at all at, at any given time and how long it's going to take them to complete any work that i give them mothers yeah, this is you don't have to answer to anyone yeah man uh, what times square you want to answer what to you got God. Pick up at Saba, double rush, round trip. I have to coordinate it so I never leave a, a part of Manhattan empty at any given point. I have to have enough people in Midtown where it's the most concentration of work. This is my office. And when I open up my office, everything is at my disposal. After I finish a run, it goes on the left side. And if I'm gonna pick on the run, pick up a run. It goes on the right side. These are my tickets. On an average, I don't try to kill myself. I'll do about 20, 25 runs. We work on a commission basis. The average, you make 50% of everything you do. You know, the better you are, the more you'll do. Me, I, I'm up in the neighborhood of I'll knock out 25, 30 runs, and that's no big thing for me. A six to $800 check a week was righteous. I do as many runs as I want to do. Sometimes 15 runs, sometimes 30. I like to come out and make $100 a day. Um, I've made 210, 215. All depends on the day. We're in a central part. We can't be taken out because original material is going to be moved all the time. And they want the originals or they want the tapes. You can't fax the tape, you can't fax that information. So we're going to always be able to move those things. To have a car do it, it's just not, it's not profitable. It's going to be too expensive, it's going to pollute. I mean, in the end, it's just making more havoc where we tend to be able to move through it and not jam up in it. I take it pretty personally when I get a job, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a rush or not, I treat them all like rushes, because I only know one way to go through traffic, and that's as fast as I can. You know, I don't know how to... We're the fastest, I mean, as far as when the traffic is at its best, you can't move quicker than we can on a bicycle. Whether you're a motorcycle or a moped, you're going to be forced to stay with the lights, or we're not going to be forced most of the time. Driving, we're faster, but maybe getting to location to location, they may be a little faster. A little or a lot? Just a lot. I think a lot. <laughs> We use them all the time because they make our life so much easier. Uh, we get to get things much quicker than we would if we had to put it in the mail. 
and we have someone always sign for it, so someone's responsible for whatever we drop off, but we call them a million times a day. They're really the best. I think I'm one of the best, yeah. I'd say that. Hardcore messengers are a breed to themselves. You know, you could only be created in Manhattan. A hardcore messenger works 24-7. That means he'll work 24 hours, seven days a week. Hello, this place. He's there. Ted Porter? Yeah. Got this delivery for you. It's a rush. It's a priority. You know, it'll be raining out. And, you know, and I'll see Smurf going by all wet and everything, carrying 30, 40 packages. I go, yo, Smurf. He goes, no, nah, man, hardly anybody came into work today. I got to work. And he yeah, right like that, you know, making money today. You know, because that's we know. We come in, the, mo the, the nastiest days, the worst weather is when the pro is going to make his money. You've got to go out with an attitude like, whatever goes down, I'm still going to make my dollars today. Everybody can come out in the sunshine, and it seems like a real glamorous job, you know. But let it be 30 degrees and raining, and somebody wants their package, that's a hardcore messenger. We want the best guys we can find to get out there and do the work. The ones that I've had have usually been on the road for like five to ten years. They know addresses, they know... I only have to tell them where the pickup is, and they usually know the routine. you get to be one of the best is that you got to be hungry you have to be tenacious you know and you got to be consistent consistency is important that's about 85 percent of the job because the, your situation changes all the time if a person's canoeing down a river you can't say i'm going to canoe to that rock and then i'm going to make a left and i'm going to canoe over to that and then the, you don't know some people automatically hit their brakes i'm not a brake person I don't stop for lights unless I really, 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 really have to. And my whole theory is if something happens in front of you, speed up. <laughs> Attack it. Because this is New York City. Three, four years ago, I got the name Butterfly. I think that's how I move in the midst of the metal. You know, I just kind of, I float through it. Before most people scream because they think I'm too close, I'm a half block away. Well, I, of course, they are a necessary evil, and uh, I do think that they should that they should be made to observe the traffic rules. And you need that cockiness. You need that confidence that, in a social setting, might not be desirable. But when you want to survive, you have to bang on cars and push them over the side and smack cab drivers in the head. It's like they push you to violence. Well, messengers are what keep the city going. They're the uh, people that brave their uh, immortal enemies, taxi cabs and trucks. I've been doing it so long that uh, the bicycle is more a part of me. See, it's you riding a bicycle, there's you and the bicycle. When I ride a bicycle, we're one. I think having my bicycle stolen is probably one of my worst nightmares. So I always try and lock the front and the rear wheel. Can you imagine what happens if they take the bicycle? Yeah, imagine <laughs> if I catch them trying to take the bicycle. Then forget about it. Yeah, call an ambulance! A bike thief among us can't show his face anymore because he's, he's fair game for anybody who finds him. We caught one bike thief and uh, he was from among our clan. And um, we locked him to a pole by his neck and we never saw his face again. We take care of our own. We police our own. We protect our own. It's like unwritten rules of the road. It's like you watch out for each other because nobody else will. Within the biking community, I know that if I were to have a wheel stolen, if I were to get myself in a bad situation, within moments, I could have five to ten bike messengers on the spot with one phone call. It's a networking system we work out here. Well, I was a bike messenger before I even stepped on the road. I just didn't know I was a bike messenger. The hardcore biker has no real fear, but has a respect for his body. 
you go into places that could potentially damage your body totally, yet at home you'll take your Epsom salt bath and you'll take your vitamins and you'll stop eating meat and you do things and you treat your body well. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is I go have a spoonful of red Korean ginseng extract, which is something that people will put honey with and make a nice big tea out of. I just spoon the glop right into my mouth. Uh, I love the taste now, but uh, most people make a lot of funny faces when they take it. But this gives me a jolt. Back in my drug days, the closest jolt I could put it to is like doing a couple lines of cocaine first thing in the morning, except I'm doing ginseng and it's doing my body wonders instead of tearing it down. Since I've become a messenger, I am much healthier than I was. I'm 36 now, and I'm much healthier than when I was 28. I was born into a Greek-American family. My mother was born here. My father was born in Greece, came over here as a professional soccer player, and my mom was the coach's daughter. When I was 17, I started uh, dealing pot in my, my old neighborhood where I grew up made enough money, decided to go back to school because I realized I couldn't do an illegal profession if I intended on having a family. And I went and got my college education in three years, came back to New York and started working at Chippendales. Chippendales is a, uh, a strip club for ladies only. It's male, male strippers. And actually it's a show that's choreographed and well thought out up to a point. And I worked there for a year and a half until I thought I was losing my mind and then I left. And I used to ride my bike from Brooklyn to Chippendales before and after work. I ran into a friend of mine, John Bush, who was working at his company best. And uh, he said, if you like to ride your bike, why don't you make money while you ride it, you know? Hit me to the messenger business. I started my own company in March. Uh, this year. I'm partnered up with this guy, D-Pop. He's been my dispatcher when I first okay, came I to the road, so I followed him around from company to company to company until eventually we started our own company together. Joey! I pulled some of the top riders out of New York. Excellent dudes. Ride very hard. They rock the road. And they're out here with me, so it's a good thing. I come back to the uh, office every now and then, make sure everything's running smoothly, see if D needs a hand. Then I run right out. I'm on the road again. I can't take this office work. To be a messenger was just like a category of the kind of spirit that we all have, you know. If we were, if we were like 70 years before or 80 years before, uh, we would have been Pony Express riders. So, you guys want to get on it? Talking to them, they gotta hear. These are all bicycle, mess bicycle messengers in training. That's what it is. My dream. Uh, I want to make enough money so I can go back to Greece and open up an American rock and roll club on this island, Aegina, and have all you come down and rock the house on my island. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't like biking. I love riding in traffic. Honestly, I think they're crazy. <laughs> You're driving along, you turn around, and some guy whoosh right around. And it's funny because a friend of mine is a bike messenger. He says when you first signed up, the first thing they give you is a list of statistics. How many deaths, how many accidents, how many injuries. Who would take that job? <laughs> Why would you take that job? There's three factions in New York City traffic. There's pedestrians, there's bicyclists, and there's motor vehicles. Nobody obeys the rules. There are dangers lurking everywhere. People can jump out from between parked cars. If you're doing 25, 30 miles an hour, it's going to be a nasty collision. If you're in the central lanes, cars decide that, you know, that they want to change lanes, they'll change lanes in front of you. And they won't think to put on their blinker. The streets are like a maze. It's never the same. 
And when you find yourself in a situation where things are closing up on you fast, you're looking for alternatives. Because you don't want to get caught in a trap, you know, you don't want to get smashed up. You know, either you get better or you get dead. <laughs> But well, like most guys, they come to the road, they get hurt once, and they go, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And then they're gone. You know, you don't, the vast majority of bikers are on the road for three weeks, four weeks, and they realize they can't handle it, and that you never see them again. I don't know how many bike messengers have gotten killed. I've lost a few good friends, guys with families, with kids. Uh, and it's ugly. When a messenger dies, it's never pretty. It's never an open casket. I've had people I know die in the business, but try not to think about it, because we are out there putting our, our life on the line for not a whole lot of money. I mean, enough to survive, but I don't know if it's enough for what we go through. My last accident happened in Brooklyn. There was this car double parked in my lane, and I was kind of like on the left side of my lane, and this car that was in the middle lane, just as I approached the double parked car, he sideswiped me. He just came out. He said, wham, right into my leg. And I went flying into the double parked car and I broke my nose. I was coming up Madison Avenue in the snow and one of my handlebars got caught underneath the truck. I was probably holding on for about two blocks before I could scream loud enough that the truck stopped and let me get my handlebar from out from underneath the hem. People resent our freedom and our ability to move through traffic while they are stuck behind wherever they are. I've had cars see me coming up and they can't move in traffic yet, they'll close off my lane just so I can't get by. When people get bored, they sit in their cars, they feel very protected, they kind of lose touch with, you know, how dangerous and how much a vehicle could really hurt a person. someone can't see you, they can't be responsible for what happens to you. So if you know they can't see you, that means that you're responsible for everything. Okay, you're all right, though? You, somebody watching, looking out for you? You're not bleeding? All right, sit on the, on the curb or something, chill out for a few minutes. I'll have somebody right over there. They'll grab your package and we'll look after you, okay? All right. Ma'am, you almost bored a bicycle messenger. Do you never look? I couldn't see him. He was going so fast. He was on the other side of the car. Does that happen often? Well, this is the first time it's ever happened to me. What do you think of bicycle, bicycle messengers? In general, they're dangerous. I don't pay attention when I'm driving and they cut me off all the time. You know you could have killed this man? <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, thank you. Getting doored. You go down, everybody goes down one way or another. That's definitely my biggest fear because I've, I've gotten doored twice. And you have nowhere to go. There's no place for you to go. When the door pops open, this car right next to you, you can't go nowhere but into the door, into that point. You know, that's, that's a bad one. I've been caught by one of those. The people that you meet on the way, the attitudes that you meet, people are beautiful, but they get on my nerves, I tell you. I'm very much in favor of bike riding. I've been riding a bike my whole life until about 12 to 15 years ago. So I love bikes, but the intelligence of the people that are riding the bikes in this congested area and on the sidewalks, on the walkways, it's unfair. There's a law against it, but they ignore it. But take a look at them. That's all I have to do. Take a look and see what it is that's doing this horror. uncaring of human life. I, I got knocked down and almost had a leg broken. So I'm not a great fan of bike messages. They just ran over me, they ran a light, 
knocked me down once. The other time, I was crossing the street between two cars, and the guy came up so fast I couldn't believe it. I was slightly illegal, but he was even more illegal. Okay, nobody should be going 45, 40 miles an hour, you know, on a city street where the cars are doing 20. Some messengers are dangerous to me. They decided they want to come up right in front of me down Fifth Avenue and all of a sudden want to stop because they can't make it through something where I would have gone. But, yeah, we can be dangerous to other people. You see that guy at the end? <laughs> see that guy in the end with the yellow glasses? Watch him. And whatever he does, don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> the two sides of Fox? No. Well, there's Fox who's, uh, you know, the road Fox. And the other one's the family man, the guy who, uh, the guy who, uh, you know, wrestles with his son. First thing in the morning, his son is jumping on him. And they wrestle around the house for about a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour before breakfast. I'm what they call a buttercup. The most important thing in my life right now is what you see, you know? My wife, my son, you know, and uh, and the other one coming, you know? She, uh, <laughs> yeah, she, um, she's coming along really well. She's getting nice and fat, you know? So what do you think about the Fox being like this? I'm all for the profession, uh, but it's a little dangerous, you know? I, I have my, I have my times where I call the office, like, constantly, is Fox okay? Did Fox call you? Did Fox do this? Did Fox do that? Could you remind Fox to do this? <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things with me. But I'm learning to appreciate it. I worked in banks as um, various types of clerk. One thing that really made me quit, I had my band out here. My, my band was really cooking. This guy goes on. Disco, rock, jazz, funk. You know, this was during the 70s. Go, will ya? New musicians from all over the place. Play with B.B. King, play with, with uh, Chuck Jackson, play with James Brown, I play with uh, Gail Adams. I play with a lot of people. Look at this guy. As a matter of fact, I got a picture of him. That's me. <gasps> That's right. Wow. You're going to look just like that guy when you grow up. That guy right there with the hair on his face. You're going to look just like him. As soon as you grow up, but don't rush it. I think that music did a thing for me. It, it kind of uh, molded me spiritually. And uh, I think this music also helped me in what I'm doing now. In Wing Chun, I'm Black Belt. And um, my last rating was Second Don, Black Belt in Taekwondo. But boxing, I'm the king. I love boxing. <laughs> Yeah, every chance I get, you know, I just stand her up there and say, come on, baby, just put those hands right up, you know? Just put the hands right up, baby, and uh, and let's get it on. Mm. I tell you, if I showed you my boxing gloves, you see the scuff marks on them? <laughs> those are not the scuff marks from, you know, from, from me hitting her or her hitting me. Those are the scuff marks are from her getting up off the floor. <laughs> yeah, okay. No dinner tonight. <laughs> no dinner tonight. Who's faster? Ah, uh, she's faster. She's the winner, I mean. She she wins. Well, he gets me from time to time. No, no, she's the winner. She she gets me. She but gets he gets me. me from time to time. <laughs> but I can't win, you know. She's the winner. She's the chief. You know. <laughs> she's the champ. That's the truth. Mothers. I give honor. You haven't called in a while. I know that. I know that about you, Giovanna. A lot of these clients I've known for years. Come on, hurry up. I'm busy. They like to talk to me. You say the funniest things. Before they even tell me, I know what they're going to ask for. Where is he? 424 West 33? And I know exactly what they want. OK. And I just have people ready to do that. No, I can't make you to rush, Giovanna. If you want you to rush, it's only two blocks. You get off your ass and go walk around the corner and deliver it yourself. Otherwise, you just have to wait till we get there. How's that? I feel that I could bring a little bit of, like, smiles wherever I go. I mean, that's like, I think that's the most important thing I do. You take the flirtation, you take the smile, and you go with it, you know, and you carry it around with you. Hello? Hello. Hi. Can I help you? 
I hope so, man. I got something for you. I love women and women love bikers. That's a fair combination. Messenger service coming with their own film crews now? Okay, right here. Okay. Okay, just put it over there. Okay, well, thank you. What does that say? Igor? Igor. Once again, that's great. Every so often, you go into an office and women are used to looking at guys in suits and ties and they're out of shape and whatever. And you show up and you're sleek and you're sweaty and you're feeling good and you're in your biking tights and they'll make comments. Take me for a ride. You got it. Good. Igor, another room. Well, sometimes they'll make a comment at the right time or you'll just turn around and you'll say something. And things will happen. Uh, once I was up in an office and a girl was commenting on what uh, nice derriere I had. And I looked at her and she was very attractive and I went with my finger. I motioned for her to come over here and I was backing towards the door. And we stepped out in the hallway, and next thing you knew, we were on the staircase. And she said, "No, I can't, I can't, I can't." And I said, "Well," and she said, "I said, okay, well, if you don't want." And she said, "Well, all right, but can we make it quick?" And so we did the nasty deed on the 15th floor on Fifth Avenue. You know, a little quick little smile for the middle of the day. Mmm. I have all my messengers on speed dial and I have different codes. If something needs to be done right away, I put 911 in and beep them like that. And then they look at that and they know whatever they're doing, they have to stop and find the phone. That means if there's somebody online in front of them waiting for a phone, they knock them out of the way and grab the phone. I don't care what they do, they have to call me because they have to get something delivered in 10 minutes. Mothers. What do I think about parades? I love them, I love them. My whole family loves them. We come over here on the weekend and sometimes in the week, and we walk around, have hot dogs, there's no traffic because they block it up, the horrible traffic, and we just enjoy ourselves. And there's always a parade to, to celebrate, and we, we just love it, simply love it. Once you lose your anonymity on the road, then cops know who you are and they'll single you out and they'll wait for you. First you grab it. First you fucking grab it, all right? I'm going to grab it because I have the right to grab it. Yes, I have the right. Get off my fucking bike. Get off my fucking bike. Like at certain times, they have quotas and the cops are told, okay, you wait at 42nd and 5th and any bike messenger that makes even a right turn where you're not supposed to make a right turn as a car, pull them over and give them a ticket. Get her off the street. Take her off. That's what I'm trying to do, but she wants to take her off. She's not. She's going to be arrested. Get off the street. I'm going and fucking going. I'm going and going. It's all about moral laws. Those I stick to. You know, I didn't do anything to the policeman. He decided he could grab me. You know, whatever. You can make the choice of who's right or who's wrong. I'm just trying to do my job. Check it out! Now this is typical shit, you understand? There are crack dealers, there are rapists, and then there's bicycle messengers, you know what I mean? What are those bikers doing and out here? Enemy. So, yeah, what this is, that? What this is what bikers, always you know? happens. You know, you'll find that the friendliest people in New York are the bikers, you know, because we're the ones that, that meet everybody. 
people think many things about bikers. They're, they're very, they get in the way a lot, I think, of the traffic. And, um, but I think they're quite, some of them are very nice. I mean, I've never met a bike messenger, so I wouldn't really be able to tell you. They have cute birds. Is that all? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think they kind of become a, a, a haven for uh, uh, the socially irregular. Okay, I really do, honestly. I mean, they, they don't stop, they don't care, and it's not just a buck. I mean, it's really, uh, it's nasty. There's a discrimination base that goes on. Uh, you know, messengers, we don't have feelings. Hi. How are you doing today? Oh, give it to the messenger, or blame it on the messenger. I mean, where the excuse... You know, the little grungy little street um, person. I have a idea. They said, uh, just pick up a package, uh, possibly from Steve from the mailroom. My only problem with them is in the summertime, they're always hot and sweaty and they want to use the telephones. And I don't want them sweating all over our telephones. And meanwhile, I own my own apartment. I have a slightly extensive stock portfolio, you know, and I go on very nice vacations. <laughs> There are a lot of people who envy us. Looks like a good job, in the, you know, as long as the weather's nice, right? As long as it don't snow and rain on you. A lot of people uh, admire us. That's very good people. You know why? Because they know the street very well, like me. Always. They work on the street. This is New York street. What do we think about bicycles in New York? A part of New York. Okay, that's it. Oh, bike messengers. Oh, yeah, that's another question. They're great. They're part of New York. <laughs> I like them, Some yes. And everything. I don't know what's going on over there. Well, they're not crazy. They, they're just doing a job. And we ought to have more bikes in the city than cars. Back in 1987, they tried to close off streets to us. They wanted to take Fifth Avenue, Park Avenue, and Madison Avenue away from us oh, yeah. between the hours of 10 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, we weren't going to stand for it because the majority of our clients were along those routes. Those were the fastest routes uptown and downtown, you know, on the east side. And uh, we weren't going for it, you know. Our livelihood was at stake. So we did a traffic slowdown. All the messengers would get together at uh, Houston Street and 6th Avenue and block 6th Avenue and have a slow march up 6th Avenue and come back down 5th Avenue. And what it really did was just show the city, you know, what happens when messengers get together, because people don't think of bike messengers as being able to organize. When Mayor Koch came down on us talking about we couldn't ride on 5th Park in Madison, he must have been crazy. Once the word got around, they said, what? That's life's blood, man. Nah, -uh, it ain't gonna work like that. And I ended up leading thousands of messengers up on these protests. We fought City Hall and won. A lot of people do know about the X-Men. A lot of people don't know. It's just that those people that don't know need to know who we are. <laughs> I'm the Flash, E-Man. That's my man, E-Man. And that's Kenyatta right there. Yeah. Kenyatta, yeah. And we are the X-Men. All the way. It's an old comic strip. The X-Men were a bunch of mutants that weren't quite human, that weren't fitting into society, but tried to assimilate as best they could. They would come out of their civilian closet and do the unbelievable. Yo, grab my bike. Yeah, you got it. Straight. Out here in New York, you have bicycle messengers, right? That's one level where there's a lot of people in it, right? But then you have the small level all the way on top, known as the X-Men or the Klingons. 
That's so right. What do we do? There's good bikers and then there are the X-Men. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference. We're up there. And we know it. It's nothing, you know, to hide. Well, we don't like to brag, but we second to none. Also known as the Klingons, because that's what we do. We cling on to fast moving vehicles. But we like hustle a little bit and we try to grab that car, right? We just snatch it. We catch it, you know what I'm saying? We just cling on to that bad boy and we with it. Ow! We're traffic surfers. We ride traffic lights like in a wave. The exactly. wave is exactly. the synchronized lights which change green as we go by blocks. And that's a wave. It keeps moving and the light turns green. For like 20 blocks. 20 blocks, more like 40 blocks. The X-Men, well, I kind of think of them as a circus act. You know, I, I think they're... Uh, in, in a way, like, they're, they're really cool what they do. But I think it's really dangerous. I think they're, they set a bad example, actually, for a lot of people that, that are riding bikes because they do all sorts of crazy maneuvers, like hanging on cars. And a lot of people watch that and try and emulate it and get seriously hurt. Why do you want to become an expert? It's like you rarely find people out riding, on, riding bikes that have the sort of mentality that you have being crazy, you know? And these guys are a bunch of mental nuts. We'd have to train you for about, let's say, six months to a year or have, more. Have you under, what we call under the eye. We'll, we'll watch you, we'll look out for you, and we'll teach you the techniques and what it takes. Well, right now, I would be considered in the Jedi stage, you know. We have a Jedi stage, and then we have the X-Men stage, you know, of riding a bike. How we exactly. do it is we ride together, right? Because when, when you're with the pack and you're moving very fast and you're going to slow this guy down, you got to be very careful. You got to you can run into You got to always know when you're holding on to a right. car that your friend might be coming behind you holding on to another car. So you can't you hang up in space. You either got to you know, go fast or move, or move out, out the way. way. Or move out the way. We'll help each other out, you know, that way we don't have to waste the time of locking the bike up on the pole. One of us will just wait outside with the other bikes. And one of us will go upstairs and drop the package off. All right, you have to be a mental case to work in the city because it's really grueling, all right? I mean, you go through a lot of stuff every day that, you know, you, your life could get taken, you know, for stupid stuff on a driver's floor. Get the license quick. You got a gun in the car. You know, every day I have to come out here knowing that I have to face all these dangerous situations and I like it in a way because it's, it's, it's sort of like a challenge. Everybody likes to say they're fast, you know? We like to say we're fast too, but we like to be exciting. What we do is if a car cuts us off, we're gonna keep going straight at the car. And we're either gonna scare the driver to the point where we're gonna make him stop, or, boof. I thought the truck hit you. I didn't even hear that. I thought the truck hit you. Yo, Kenyatta didn't even turn around. He thought it was an ash can. I looked back out of the car. She went, bah! Yeah. Look at this. Here's what happens when you're trying to do a stupid power move. Mm -hmm. Thank God that he's all right, and it didn't happen when he was doing 70. Because if it would have, I would have still had control. And even then, you don't want things like that to happen. So we try to avoid negativity no like that. No mistakes. No mistakes. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. Hey, hey. Peter had a big accident like three years ago. And uh, ever since he had that accident, he, he wore the helmet. Uh, because of our friend, the legend, which was the one who originated everything. Joey, the legend. Joy the legend gave us gave us idea. the idea of the, 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 the protective wear. That's why we all wear Kevlar pants. These pants right here, they're made out of Kevlar. The same things that tires are made out of. You know, we wear jerseys. We don't wear short sleeves. We try never to wear short sleeve shirts. We always try to wear long sleeve. 
We wear elbow pads. We wear knee pads underneath. This is all hardcore. Joey right? Joe, the legend, is the original. Joey's out there 12 years plus. He invented everything the X-Men do. There weren't even in puberty when he was doing what he was doing. My name is Joey. I'm a New York bicycle messenger. I have been for the past 12 years. I'm 39 years old. I am the first X-Man. And I'll be an X-Man till the day I die. This is not a stepping stone job for me. This is my life. If there's anything I want to be proud of is the fact that I'm a good bicycle messenger. I'm reliable, dependable, I've earned the most money, I've delivered the most packages. And um, that's part of being a legend. A legend won't let you down. It seems like everybody wants their envelope five minutes ago, so you do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I just started holding on to buses, trucks, cars, anything going my way, I'd hold on. I like to ride alone. I've done speeds up to 80 miles an hour, but during the work day, I pretty much keep 50, 55 miles an hour, and uh, you put your heart into it. You don't be a clown. And especially, you don't be a clone either. Men have been killed out here trying to copy what I've done. And it's not to put on a show. I'm not a stunt man. I'm not a show off. Whatever I do, it's got something to do with my job and meeting my deadline. And uh, I suppose that's why I don't have many accidents. And I can recall whenever I did have an accident, I was showing off. Yeah, I wear protective gear. But it's not a costume. It serves a purpose. The purpose is safety. I got a handsome face. I want to keep it. <laughs> Go run away. Come back. I'm gonna show you little Edwin Christopher. This is my sonny, he's 16 months years old. Then you got little Paul Jr., also known as PJ. God bless. That's what I ride for out here, for that. Gia. Little PJ. He gives me an X and everything, I love that little yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. But this is my little daughter right here, this is Maisie Lynn. She's so beautiful, God bless her. I got the big family. That's the family, family man. Family man over here. They don't call Peter Cottontail or Jack Rabbit for nothing. It. Talk about population, my Talk three little population. girls, my wife. What's their names? Janelle, Chanel, and Danielle. Like that. Lovely, Please lovely. Go. My princesses. My father when I'm home. Come here, Maisie. When we get home, we're like Peter Parker and Spider-Man when Peter Parker got his suit on. When Peter Parker's Peter Parker, he's Peter Parker. And when he's Spider-Man, he's Spider-Man. He's all geared up. Right now, exactly. we're Spider-Man. When we get home, we're Peter Parkers. Exactly. There you go. First thing that comes to my mind is um, shape and style. Shape, I think, how many times, how many hours I have to stand on the Stairmasters to get the same tights, the same legs, the same butt? Style, you know, what Chanel would have done without them in the last five collections? They love me. He's all sexy lad. That's all it takes. When I first came here eight years ago, you hardly saw men wearing tights. It was like unheard of. But then when we started introducing that, besides the cyclists who race, people started being a little more receptive to it. And then after a while, you'd go into nightclubs and you see people dancing in bikers gear. He has a sexy car. It gets me far. He has a sexy hat. And I like that. He has a sexy hat. 
very inspiring for fashion. He's like, they come up with some great outfits, really super stuff. I know I was pretty much the first one to come out in a skirt. So now I found a skirt that's long enough to cover it and short enough not to get in the way. Bicycle messengers have brought back the days of Sir Walter Raleigh, Don Juan, the Three Musketeers with the tights. When you come into an office, you want to make a statement. You want to look good, you want to look professional and attractive. Um, grew up partially on a farm. Um, grew up around horses. I showed horses and a lot of responsibility from the age of like nine or ten, I guess, out feeding at five. And I was kind of the stray cat, the one who went out to see a lot of different things. But I think in the very beginning, I wanted to be a messenger because I was admiring everyone. I admired it for something fun, but also very rough and tough. <laughs> she definitely does it because of the danger. You know, the danger is her thing. Like, for instance, if you see the way how she rides between traffic to get a package delivered, it's totally crazy. I see it, you know? To come out here and ride a bike takes a lot of guts in traffic in New York City. Um, but above that, I also race bicycles. It's really hard to balance the two. The amount of work it's going to take for me to actually make a lot of money means that I've exerted that much energy and that much energy I can't put into my training. You can be a real fast uh, messenger, but being put in a race with 70 or 80 other bicycles at top speeds for an hour and a, hour and a half of racing, it takes a different kind of person. It takes a lot of different training. The difference, I think, is the endurance level. I mean, there's a, there's a whole different story to go out and ride for five hours of uninterrupted riding and to go out and messenger and have to stop here and deal with this and deal with that. So I take the weekends to regroup and put in the, the solid mileage. Being a woman out here, it's hard on your body, especially through the cycles that we go through. Um, certain things that you have to take out here just because of the pollutants and the toxins in the air. Take a lot of multivitamins every day. Um, I have a package of probably 10 vitamins that I take three times a day. Yeah. As far as my racing, this is a race that I won, Labor Day Track Program. It's the end of the season. It was a two-day event, and as a woman, I took overall winnings for that one. These are the medals from this year at Districts. This, um, that's a third and two seconds, but those seconds are only behind a world champion. I'd like to be world champion, that's my overall goal. And I don't think that there's any reason, if in a year I went from a Cat 5 cyclist to a Cat 2, why couldn't I be world champion in three years? You know, if I'm racing what this country has to offer is their fastest, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be there. I'm quite sure, she, like she said, she'll make it to the world championship, you know. Maybe she'll start by going to the Olympics in 96, you know. That'd be great. To gain respect by us is that you got to show us some phenomenal bike moves. I mean, Greg Lamont was in New York uh, about a year and a half ago, and we took him out on a ride on the streets, and he rode a few blocks with us and said, no, you guys are nuts. I don't know how you do it. And he stopped riding. And here's a guy who rides a tour of the France, and who, incidentally, is probably the only guy who has the respect of <laughs> all the bike messages in New York. And he had total respect for what we did. And that kind of like elevated what we did. Not in the world's eyes, but just in our own eyes. I go home and try not to answer any phones. Uh, I'm a musician, so usually after work I'm going to practice or I have a show to play. My band's called Black Flies. We play just about every weekend. Uh, I don't play during the weekdays anymore because it kind of interferes with coming to work in the morning and being awake. <laughs> throw our own parties, 
You know, people die to come to our parties. When we pass around invites all around the city to all the receptionists that are in the city, they love our parties because we have the best music and nobody stands around staring at the floor and the walls. Nobody's trying to pick anybody up. We just want to cut loose. We just want to dance and go nutty. And that's all. So people go kill for our parties. Imagine your first boyfriend, or first girlfriend, as it were, right? Uh, the excitement and the anticipation of the first kiss. How high and how great you feel, you know? Well, you multiply that by 10, and that's the rush we get. As close as what I know to Nirvana, I guess is that high-speed, electrical feeling that runs through you at 30, 40 miles an hour and moving with the pace of things or faster than the pace of things. I mean, in the inner city, we are moving faster than the traffic. So it's a really, it's, it's a great feeling. We're the last free spirits in America. Yeah, I'm an adventurer stuck in one place. <laughs> I'm Marco Polo, doomed to New York. You must understand that this is a tool. Turn on. Peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I love to do, and it's my passion. See ya. This is what I have to do, here is my conversion. And we'll keep on riding till the <laughs> end. We are... Take two. Riding through the jungle. In England, they'd really put you in jail, whatever, without talking about it. You dare do it in London. You ride out where vehicles travel, not on the footpath. What do I think of bike messengers? I don't know, basically they're all a pain in the ass to me. I love them. Today I love them. I'm 27 years old. I've been a bike messenger for five years. I just had my 46th birthday. My name is Bill. My road handle is Silver Fox, and I've been on the road 10 years. Open my eyes, cause I'm 
as I fear the sun Open my mind for this morning Take in my mood Give a part away To share with you the new day My given name is Stephen Thomas Athenian but on the streets, everybody knows me as the Greek. I've been out on the road eight and a half years. Yo, sub nine mil. There are about 3,000 part-time messengers and about 100 hardcore messengers riding in the city today. There are 60,000 runs delivered in New York daily. A run includes a pickup of a document or a package and its delivery to its final destination. Advertising companies, galleries, magazines, and many others depend on the prompt delivery of their important documents, photographs, whatever. Mothers, double day? Okay, how many books are you picking up? Now, this speedy delivery would be, like, impossible in Manhattan if you choose, like, a car, a van, even a motorcycle has a hard time getting around in New York. Now, a bike. Now, that's the only thing they could do it, and only a bike messenger could break this barrier of traffic. Oh, there is nothing like riding through the jungle on my bicycle. Biking through the jungle, the city of New York. Some people ski, some people skate. I ride this bike, and this is it. Riding through the jungle On my bicycle Biking through the jungle The city of New York New York City and the, and the business industry are the body of the city and the heart of the city is the bicycle messenger we're the heart of communication you know a lot of people they want things done they want it done quickly and they want it done as quickly as possible you know they pay for their privilege they want it done direct no stops in between they want it to go directly to the individual that it's, that it's addressed to and that's who it goes to Oh, hi. Come in, come in. I'm going to give you a package. Uh, I go and get it. Just wait here. We deliver uh, videotape. We deliver um, garment bags. We deliver portfolios. And all of these things that we deliver touch a number of other people. You go to Mr. Ted Porter mm -hmm. on 55 and You know, if they weren't Order able to be delivered within a time frame, a lot of things wouldn't move. And the mechanism would, would shut down. So you just want him to get this package. Absolutely in person, nobody else. Do I have to sign anything? Nope, that's your receipt. Okay, thank you so much. See ya. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks a lot. A lot of times a deal will hinge on timing, and you can't rely on, on UPS for timing. You can't rely on Federal Express for timing, but you can rely on a bicycle messenger. And without that, that comfort, you throw off the timing of the entire business world because everybody's so used to us right now. If someone gives me a package, it's like gold, because it's part of my pride, is how fast I get it there and the condition that it arrives. I like to impress people. And when I take a package and it gets there in no time, these people are like, wow. You know, when I walk into a person's office and they see it's me delivering their package and they know it's a rush, they're really glad it's me. I'm like, oh, Steve, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> What's up, yeah? All right. Yeah, man. This for me? Yeah, man. All right, man. Double rush. You got it. I think it is. All right. A rush is rocked out in an hour. A double rush is rocked out, picked up and delivered in a half hour. A triple rush, you get one possessed messenger to knock it out in 15 minutes. You know, something that had to be there yesterday. Like, let's say it's a normal run would be $7, you know, to go 10 blocks. $7. A rush it would be $11. A double rush, it would be $15. The triple brush would bounce that baby up to $19. Hi, speaking. Yes, 
start at triple eight seventh and work your way down to two pen plaza on the west side. Okay, I'll beep you. Don't call me, I'll call you. Bye. Okay, dispatcher is um, basically the coordinator of what goes on here. He takes in all the all the runs that come in and he gives them out to the messengers. He's got to know where all the messengers are at all at, at any given time and how long it's going to take them to complete any work that I give them. Mothers. Yeah, this is Fox. You don't have to answer to anyone. Yeah, man, uh, Times Square. You to what you got? Pick up at Saba, double rush, round trip. I have to coordinate it, so I never leave a, a part of Manhattan empty at any given point. I have to have enough people in Midtown where it's the most concentration of work. This is my office. And when I open up my office, everything is at my disposal. After I finish a run, it goes on the left side. And if I'm going to pick on the run, pick up a run, it goes on the right side. These are my tickets. On an average, I don't try to kill myself. I do about 20, 25 runs. We work on a commission basis. The average, you make 50% of everything you do. You know, the better you are, the more you'll do. Me, I, I'm up in the neighborhood of I'll knock out 25, 30 runs. And that's no big thing for me. A six to $800 check a week was righteous. I do as many runs as I want to do. Sometimes 15 runs, sometimes 30. I like to come out and make $100 a day. Um, I've made 210, 215. All depends on the day. We're in Essential Park. We can't be taken out because original material is going to be moved all the time. And they want the originals or they want the tapes. You can't fax the tape, you can't fax that information. So we're going to always be able to move those things. To have a car do it, it's just not, it's not profitable. It's going to be too expensive, it's going to pollute. I mean, in the end, it's just making more havoc where we tend to be able to move through it and not jam up in it. I take it pretty personally when I get a job, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a rush or not, I treat them all like rushes, because I only know one way to go through traffic, and that's as fast as I can. You know, I don't know how to... We're the fastest, I mean, as far as... And uh, he was from among our clan. And um, we locked him to a pole by his neck. And we never saw his face again. We take care of our own. We police our own. We protect our own. It's like unwritten rules of the road. It's like you watch out for each other because nobody else will. Within the biking community, I know that if I were to have a wheel stolen, if I were to get myself in a bad situation, within moments, I could have five to ten bike messengers on the spot with one phone call. It's a networking system we work out here. Well, I was a bike messenger before I even stepped on the road. I just didn't know I was a bike messenger. The hardcore biker has no real fear, but has a respect for his body. You go into places that could potentially damage your body totally, yet at home you'll take your Epsom salt bath and you'll take your vitamins and you'll stop eating meat and you do things and you treat your body well. First thing I do when I get up in the morning is I go have a spoonful of red Korean ginseng extract which is something that people will put honey with and make a nice big tea out of. I just spoon the glop right into my mouth. Uh, I love the taste now, but uh, most people make a lot of funny faces when they take it. But this gives me a jolt. Back in my drug days, the closest jolt I could put it to is like doing a couple lines of cocaine first thing in the morning, except I'm doing ginseng and it's doing my body wonders instead of tearing it down. Since I've become a messenger, I am much healthier and than I was, I'm 36 now, and I'm much healthier than when I was 28. 
I was born into a Greek American family. My mother was born here. My father was born in Greece, came over here as a professional soccer player, and my mom was the coach's daughter. When I was 17, I started uh, dealing pot in my, my old neighborhood where I grew up, made enough money, decided to go back to school because I realized I couldn't do an illegal profession if I intended on having a family. And I went and got my college education in three years, came back to New York, and started working at Chippendales. Chippendales is a, uh, a strip club for ladies only. It's male, male strippers. And actually it's a show that's choreographed and well thought out up to a point. And I worked there for a year and a half until I thought I was losing my mind and then I left. And I used to ride my bike from Brooklyn to Chippendales before and after work. I ran into a friend of mine, John Bush, who was working at this company best. And uh, he said, if you like to ride your bike, why don't you make money while you ride it, you know? Hit me to the messenger business. I started my own company in March of this year. I'm partnered up with this guy, Deepop. He's been my dispatcher when I okay, first came I to the road, so I followed him around from company to company to company until eventually we started our own company together. Joey! I pulled some of the top riders out of New York. Excellent dudes. Ride very hard. They rock the road. And they're out here with me, so it's a good thing. I come back to the uh, office every now and then, make sure everything's running smoothly, see if D needs a hand. Then I run right out. I'm on the road again. I can't take this office work. To be a messenger was just like a category of the kind of spirit that we all have, you know? If we, were, if we were like 70 years before or 80 years before, uh, we would have been Pony Express riders. So, you guys want to get on it? That's what I'm talking to them. They got to hear it. These are all bicycle messengers in training. That's what it is. My dream. Uh, I want to make enough money so I can go back to Greece and open up an American rock and roll club on this island, Aegina, and have all you come down and rock the house on my island. All right? All right. <laughs> I don't like biking. I love riding in traffic. Honestly, I think they're crazy. <laughs> You're driving along, you turn around, and some guy whoosh right around. And it's funny because a friend of mine is a bike messenger. He says when you first signed up, the first thing they give you is a list of statistics. How many deaths, how many accidents, how many injuries. Who would take that job? <laughs> Why would you take that job? There's three factions in New York City traffic. There's pedestrians, there's bicyclists, and there's motor vehicles. Nobody obeys the rules. There are dangers lurking everywhere. People can jump out from between parked cars. If you're doing 25, 30 miles an hour, it's going to be a nasty collision. If you're in the central lanes, cars decide that, you know, that they want to change lanes, they'll change lanes in front of you. And they won't think to put on their blinker. The streets are like a maze. It's never the same. And when you find yourself in a situation where things are closing up on you fast, you're looking for alternatives. Because you don't want to get caught in a trap, you know, you don't want to get smashed up. You know, either you get better or you get dead. <laughs> But like most guys, they come to the road, they get hurt once, and they go, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And then they're gone. You know, you don't, the vast majority of bikers are on the road for three weeks, four weeks, and they realize they can't handle it, and that you never see them again. I don't know how many bike messengers have gotten killed. I've lost a few good friends, guys with families, with kids. Uh, and it's ugly. When a messenger dies, it's never pretty. It's never an open casket. I've had people I know die in the business, but try not to think about it, because we are out there putting our, our life on the line for not a whole lot of money. I mean, enough to survive, but I don't know if it's enough for what we go through. 
My last accident happened in Brooklyn. There was this car double parked in my lane, and I was kind of like on the left side of my lane, and this car that was in the middle lane just as I approached the double park car, he sideswiped me. He just came out, <laughs> wham, right into my leg, and I went flying into the double park car, and I broke my nose. I was coming up Madison Avenue in the snow, and one of my handlebars got caught underneath the truck. I was probably holding on for about two blocks before I could scream loud enough that the truck stopped and let me get my handlebar from out from underneath the hem. People resent our freedom and our ability to move through traffic while they are stuck behind wherever they are. I've had cars see me coming up, and they can't move in traffic yet. They'll close off my lane just so I can't get by. When people get bored, they sit in their cars, they feel very protected, they kind of lose touch with, you know, how dangerous and how much a vehicle could really hurt a person. someone can't see you, they can't be responsible for what happens to you. So if you know they can't see you, that means that you're responsible for everything. Okay, you're all right, though? Somebody watching, looking out for you? You're not bleeding? All right, sit on the on the curb or something, chill out for a few minutes. I'll have somebody right over there. They'll grab your package and we'll look after you, okay? All right. Ma'am, you almost scored a bicycle messenger. Do you never look? I couldn't see him. He was going so fast. He was on the other side of the car. Does that happen often? Well, this is the first time it's ever happened to me. What do you think of bicycle messenger? In general, they're dangerous. I don't pay attention when I'm driving and they cut me off all the time. You know you could have killed this man? <laughs> I know. I know. When the traffic is at its best, you can't move quicker than we can on a bicycle. Whether you're a motorcycle or a moped, you're going to be forced to stay with the lights or we're not going to be forced most of the time. We're faster, but maybe getting to location to location, they may be a little faster. A little or a lot? Just a lot. lot. I think a lot. <laughs> We use them all the time because they make our life so much easier. Uh, we get to get things much quicker than we would if we had to put it in the mail. And we have someone always sign for it, so someone's responsible for whatever we drop off. But we call them a million times a day. They're really the best. Well, I think I'm one of the best, yeah. I'd say that. The hardcore messengers are a breed to themselves. You know, you could only be created in... Manhattan. A hardcore messenger works 24-7. That means he'll work 24 hours, seven days a week. Hello, this place. He's there. Ted Porter? Yeah. Got this delivery for you. It's a rush. It's a priority. You know, it'll be raining out, and you know, and I'll see Smurf going by all wet and everything, carrying 30, 40 packages. I go, yo, Smurf. He goes, no, nah, man, hardly anybody came into work today. I got to work and shit. Yeah, right like that. You know, I'm making money today. You know, because that's what we know. We come in, the, mo the, the nastiest days, the worst weather is when the pro is going to make his money. You got to go out with an attitude like, whatever goes down, I'm still going to make my dollars today. Everybody can come out in the sunshine, and it seems like a real glamorous job, you know. But let it be 30 degrees and raining, and somebody wants their package, that's a hardcore messenger. We want the best guys we can find to get out there and do the work. The ones that I've had have usually been on the road for like five to ten years. They know addresses, they know, I only have to tell them where the pickup is, and they usually know the routine. you get to be one of the best is that you got to be hungry. 
you have to be tenacious, you know, and you've got to be consistent. Consistency is important. That's about 85% of the job because the, your situation changes all the time. If a person's canoeing down a river, you can't say, I'm going to canoe to that rock and then I'm going to make a left and I'm going to canoe over to that. And then the, You don't know. Some people automatically hit their brakes. I'm not a brake person. I don't stop for lights unless I really, 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 really have to. And my whole theory is if something happens in front of you, speed up. <laughs> Attack it. Because this is New York City. Three, four years ago, I got the name Butterfly. I think that's how I move in the midst of the metal. You know, I just kind of, I float through it. Before, most people scream because they think I'm too close. I'm a half block away. Well, I, of course, they are a necessary evil. And uh, I do think that they should, that they should be made to observe the traffic rules. And you need that cockiness, you need that confidence that in a social setting might not be desirable. But when you want to survive, you have to bang on cars and push them over the side and smack cab drivers in the head. It's like they push you to violence. The messengers are what keep the city going. They're the uh, people that brave their uh, immortal enemies, taxi cabs and trucks. I've been doing it so long that the bicycle is more part of me. See, to you riding a bicycle, there's you and the bicycle. When I ride a bicycle, we're one. I think having my bicycle stolen is probably one of my worst nightmares. So I always try and lock the front and the rear wheel. Can you imagine what happens if they take the bicycle? Yeah, imagine <laughs> if I catch them trying to take the bicycle. Man. Yeah, call an ambulance. A bike thief among us can't show his face anymore because he's he's fair game for anybody who finds him. We call one bike thief.